Prince Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh, and Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. Alfred was the fourth child of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom and Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. He was born at Windsor Castle in Windsor, England on the 6th of August, 1844. Alfred was christened on the 6th of September, 1844, in a private chapel at Windsor Castle with the name Alfred Ernst Albert. After being educated at home along with his older brother, Edward, the Prince of Wales, future King Edward VII, Alfred entered the British Navy at the age of 14. Rising quickly through the ranks, by February 1866, he had been elevated to the rank of captain. In the following year, in 1867, he was given command of his own ship, HMS Galatee. During his military career, Alfred found himself potentially taking a throne of his own. After having deposed their ruler, King Otto, the people of Greece voted to determine the future of the Greek monarchy. Prince Alfred received 95% of the votes. Despite this, under the terms of the London Conference of 1832, members of the ruling families of the great powers, Britain, France, and Russia, were prohibited from ascending the Greek throne. In addition, Queen Victoria was adamantly opposed to the idea, as Alfred was already attempted to succeed his uncle Ernst as Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. Alfred's father and elder brother had renounced their rights of succession, leaving Alfred as heir apparent to his uncle, the Greek throne, ending up going to Prince Wilhelm of Denmark, who reigned as King George I of the Hellenes. Along with his military career from 1863 to 1865, Prince Alfred studied at the University of Edinburgh and the University of Bonn. With his future role as Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha in mind, in 1865, Alfred purchased a palace in Coburg, just across the square from Schloss Ehrenberg, the official ducal residence. This palace, known as Palais Edinburgh, will be his residence for Colbert until his accession 28 years later. The following year, May 1866, he was created Duke of Edinburgh, Earl of Ulster, and Earl of Kent. Along with this came a preliminary allowance of £15,000 per year and a seat in the House of Lords. From a young age, Prince Alfred developed a strong interest in stamp collecting. Through the years, he amassed a rather extensive collection, which he later sold to his brother, King Edward VII, who passed it on to his son, King George V. Today, it forms part of the Royal Philactic Collection, housed at St. James Palace in London, England. On the 24th of January, 1867, Alfred set sail on HMS Galatee for a trip around the world. Following a visit to Cape Town in South Africa, he arrived in Australia on the 31st of October, 1867, the first British royal to set foot in the country. On the 12th of March, 1868, while visiting Sydney, Prince Alfred was the victim of an assassination attempt. An Irishman, Harry James O'Farrell, fired at the prince from behind, striking him just to the side of his spine. Alfred was quickly taken to Government House at Sydney, where he spent several weeks recovering before again assuming command of his ship and returning home in June 1868. An outpouring of support for the prince, the people voted for some sort of memorial to be built in his honor. This led to the construction of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. In addition to being the first British royal in Australia, Prince Alfred was also the first to visit New Zealand, Japan, Hong Kong, India, and Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, and visits over the next several years. On the 24th of January, 1874, at the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, Russia, Alfred married Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrovna, the only daughter of Alexander II, Emperor of all Russia, and Princess Maria of Hessen by Rhine. The couple settled at Clarence House in London, England, and Eastwell Park in Kent, England, which they leased until 1893. Alfred and Marie had five children. Prince Alfred, hereditary Prince of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, Princess Marie, future Queen Marie of Romania, Princess Victoria Melita, future Grand Duchess Victoria Melita of Russia, Princess Alexandra, Princess of Hohenlohe-Lachenberg, and Princess Beatrice, 
Over the next 20 years, Alfred's distinguished naval career saw him serve as Admiral Superintendent of Naval Reserves, Commander-in-Chief of both the Channel Fleet and the Mediterranean Fleet, as well as Commander-in-Chief Plymouth, and in June of 1893, he was made Admiral of the Fleet, the highest rank in the British Navy. Unfortunately, his Royal Navy career will soon come to an end. On the 23rd of August, 1893, Alfred's uncle Ernst died, and he became the reigning Duke of saxe coburg and Gotha. While this had been the plan for many years, Alfred resented having to give up his naval career as well as his British life. He gave up his annuity and his seat in the House of Lords and became the first person to voluntarily resign from the Privy Council. However, he successfully pensioned Parliament to continue the separate funding he received to maintain Clarence House for the rest of his life. The transition to his new position was not easy. The people were mostly against the idea of a British prince being their duke, despite the fact that his father was born a prince of saxe coburg and Gotha. But Alfred managed to build up the people's confidence in him and soon became quite popular with the people, leaving most of the governing to the state ministry. Alfred instead spent his time traveling, hunting, and following all the latest advances of the Royal Navy, the career which he missed ever so greatly. Sadly, his reign will be rather short. On the 30th of July, 1900, a Schloss Rosenau and Coburg, Duchy of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, now in Bavaria, Germany, Alfred died from throat cancer at the age of 55. He was buried in a ducal mausoleum in the Gokenberg Cemetery in Coburg. He was succeeded by his nephew, Prince Charles Edward, Duke of Albany, son of his late brother, Leopold. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification button, and be sure to be on the lookout for my other videos I'll be releasing in the future. Have an amazing day, and thank you so much for watching.